Welcome to Live Doc, your online Doc Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf, which is Erevin Daf Mem Beis. Erevin Daf Mem Aleph on Beis, four lines from the bottom. Says the Gemara, Omer Av Papa, Peiroiz Sheyatsu Chutz L'Tchum, if one has some fruit that were taken out of the Tchum, V'chazru, and brought back into the Tchum, so even fruit have a Tchum, we know that a person's possessions are bound to the same boundaries as the person himself. They cannot be transported out of the Tchum of the person. So for instance, a person who was Shavis, who attained his Shabbos residence in this city. So his possession, likewise, must remain in that city, and 2,000 Amas beyond. So if these fruit were taken out of the Tchum, so while they're outside, it's like a person who left the Tchum. Right now, they're limited to four Amas. You can only carry them within the four Amas. And if it was done by Mezid, so one is not allowed to eat them, because you're going to be benefiting from an Isser. One is not allowed to take fruit, Possessions outside the Tchum. But in this case, it was Yotzu Chutz Tchum, V'chazru. And they came back. They were brought back into the original Tchum. Says Rav Papa, Afilu B'mezid. Even if this was done B'mezid. A person deliberately, he knew what he was doing, he took them out of the Tchum, brought them back to the Tchum. Lo Yefsidu Es They haven't lost their Makim. Meaning, they revert back to the original Tchum. Since they're back in the original boundaries, you can carry them throughout that area. And you'll have to eat them. Now this is unlike an Adam, a person who left his Tchum, as we went to the Mishnah. If a person goes out of the Tchum, so he's limited to four Amas. He must remain within that Dal Amas. If he decides to leave that four Amas, which is considered to be his current Tchum, to leave that and go back into town, he hasn't gained anything because he wasn't allowed to leave those four Amas. He's still considered like a Yoytzech Hosot Tchum. And he'll still be limited to four Amas. The only way that a person could regain the original Tchum, is if he was carried out. Let's say Nachram carried him both ways. So in this case, he's not at fault. He's not held accountable for it. He's not considered to be a Yoytze Chutz He's like, he's merely like an object. In this case, since he was carried out and back in against his will, he gets back the original Tchum. He's not considered a Yoytze. He never left the Tchum. He didn't do it on his own. He was carried out. Against his will. So in this case, when he comes back, it's as though nothing happened. Says your Papa, when it comes to Paris, when it comes to these fruit, even if it was it, a person willingly, deliberately carried them out. So at that point, when they're still outside, they're limited to farms, one cannot partake in that fruit because he's benefiting from the Isser. But if he decided to bring them back as well, he did a double Isser, says your Papa, they regain their original Tchum. Why is that? My time. Anusininu. They're like an They're faultless. It's not their fault. They're not held accountable for the Isser that this person did by carrying them out and back in. Therefore, they're just like the case of the person who was transported two ways by the guy. Therefore, they're back in their tomb and one can carry them throughout the entire area just like originally he was able to and also they may be eaten because since we don't consider these fruit to have left the Tchum, they're not like Yoytzi Chutz They didn't do anything wrong. So, they're not limited to four Amas. And likewise, there's nothing wrong with eating them. Because there was no harm done. This is where they were originally. So he took them out and brought them back in. It says, oh, nothing happened. It's not considered to be having Hana, benefiting tangible, tangible Hana from the Yoytzi Chutz This is where they were originally. And this is where they are now. No harm was done. It's as though nothing happened. So that's the Chiddush of Papa. Paris that were transported both ways, even with Mesid, it's okay. Says the Gemara, Eisve, Rav Yosef Bar Shmaya. So he asked the Kasha of Papa. We have a Bryce. Rav Nechemya, Rav Lezab and Yaakov Oymrim. Lo'olam Asura. So they're also referring to fruit. So these fruit that were taken out of the Tchum will remain Asur Ad, Shiyachsur Lemekoyman Shagigin. They're Asr unless they're back in their original place. And this was done by Shaykh. Only then can one eat it. Now, just for clarity, whenever we speak about Isser and Heter, in our Sugi here, uh, pertaining to fruit, we're speaking about two aspects. Number one, that the Heter means that you can carry them throughout the entire area. They're not limited to four Amas. And it also means you're allowed to eat them. 
it's not considered to be benefiting from an Isser. So again, Rav Lezer and Rechemi tell us, fruit that would transport out of the Tchum remain Aser, unless they're brought back to the original muck and the original location, and this entire episode took place with a Shagig. It was done inadvertently. Beshagig in, only then, Bemezid loy, but otherwise, if it was taken out, Bemezid, transported deliberately, there's no way to eat these fruits. So apparently, according to this Brysa, this halacha won't be true. If fruit were transported, Bemezid, even if they're back in the original location, they're also, they're restricted, they're considered like something which left at Chum, and they're limited to four Amas. You can't eat them because you're going to be benefiting from an Esa. Says the Gemara Tanoi, indeed, it's Machlekes Tanoi, and this is one Shita, and Rav Papa actually is compatible with the Tanakama, as we're going to see in the following Bryce. It holds that even when it was done by Mezid, since these are fruit, it's Anusim, they're faultless, and held accountable, we don't regard them as something which left at Chum, so since they're back home, we forget about the whole episode, no harm was done. The Sanya, Peret Shiyotsu Chuslat Chum, Bishoygeg, Yachlu. If they're taken out, Bishoygeg, then you can eat them in their new location. Bimezid, Lo Yachlu. But if they're taken out, Bimezid, so we consider this to be an Isser, and therefore one cannot benefit from it, one cannot eat them, even at their new location. Remechem Yaimer, Bim koiman yeachlu. When they're in their original location, meaning if they will return back to where they were taken from, then you can eat them. Shalai bim koiman. But if they're out of their original location, they're sitting outside the trum, lo yeachlu. Then one cannot eat these fruit. He says, well, let's analyze what Rechem is saying. My bim koiman. So when he says that you can eat them provided they're back in the original location, what are we speaking about? How do they get back? How are they transported? If they were transported b'mezid, in that case, or Nechemi will hold, well, since they're back home, it's okay. And in accordance with our Papa told us that there are nusim, the faultless, and even if it was done b'mezid, we don't attribute that to the fruit, then are held accountable, we regard it as though nothing happened. Is that what Nechemi is saying? That can't be. V'oktani behedyeh. Because it's clearly stated in the Brisa, the Brisa that we mentioned earlier, Reb Nechemia, Reb Lezer Ben Yaakov Oymer, Lo'elam Asurim, they'll always remain Asur. Achi Yachsur Lemukayim and Shayigin. They're Asur unless two things took place. They're back in the original location, and number two, it was done by Shayigig. By Shayigin, only when it was done by Shayigig. In which case, an Isser was not committed. By Mezid Light. But if it was done by Mezid, they were transported by Mezid. You cannot partake in these fruit, even if they're back in their location, because according to these shittas, although the fruits themselves are not held accountable, not responsible, they are nusim. But we reckon with the fact that a person committed an iser. He has transported them b'mezid. He's taken them out and back into the tchum b'mezid. So we regard even the fruit as though they, they were yaitzah chutzah tchum. They're considered like somebody who left the tchum. And they're limited to four amis. And one cannot eat them even if they're back home, because he's benefiting from an Esser. So it's very clear that according to Reb Nechemia, you cannot eat the fruit, even if it's back in its location, if it was done b'mezid. So apparently that's not what Reb Nechemia is saying. He's not allowing it to be eaten when it's back in its location, b'mezid. El Alav must be. The, what was Reb Nechemia saying when he said, if it's back home, it could be eaten. What case? El alav b'mkoyimah b'shoigeg. Specifically if it was done b'shoigeg. Meaning, you need two positive elements here. Number one, there was no Avey really committed because it was done b'shoigeg. There was no answer here. Number two, currently speaking, it's back in its original tchum. But if it's outside, if it's in the tchum, you cannot eat these fruits. So that's the shita of Ramachemya or Blazim and Yaakov. Both positive elements are required to allow these fruits to be eaten. And the Tanakhama will hold? No. He'll say, well, if it's uh, B'shoigig and it's still out of the Trum, that's okay. Because there's one positive element here. It's B'shoigig. No Issa was done. Number two, if it's back home, 
and it's in its original tchum, even if it was remazed, it's okay. And according to Rav Papa, meaning, according to Tanakama, even one positive element is sufficient to allow partaking in these fruits. Let's approach the Brisa as those missing some words. And this is how we're meant to learn it. The Brisa begins with Tanakama, Perish that were taken out of Tchum, if it was done which case there was no Isr done, then you can eat them. But if it was taken out, so there was an Isr that took place, then they cannot be eaten. When is this? When does this Isr apply? When is it said? If they're outside the original location. So, if it was on B'mezid, and it's also sitting outside Chutzot Chum, so we have two negative elements here. Because it was an Isr done, B'mezid, and also it's currently outside the Chum. In which case, you're benefiting from the Isr, if you're eating it out there, because you're enjoying tangible benefits from the fact that the person transported to this location. So in only in that case is it Asr. You have two negative elements here. B'mezid, and it's also Shalai Bim Kaiman. Avil Bim Kaiman. But if it's back home, even if it was transported by Mezid, it's okay. Because according to Tanakama, as long as there's one positive element present, that suffices to allow eating these fruit. Meaning, if it was done by so that's one positive element, there's no Issa done whatsoever. So even if it's currently outside the Tchum, that's okay. So although it's limited to four Amas, but you can go and eat it. Because you're not benefiting from Isr. There was no Isr, there was That's one example. Or alternatively, if it's back home, in that case, we have that positive element, because it's back in its original Tchum. You're not really benefiting from any Isr. In that case, even if it was B'mezid, in which case an Isr was committed, we don't reckon with that Isr. As our Papa told us, the fruit are falseless, are faultless. They're, they're anusim. So even if this person committed an Isr, he took them out, brought them back to Mason, but since they're back home, we disregard the person's actions. We focus on the fruit themselves. They're back home, no harm was done. So that's the Shita of Tanakam. As long as there's one positive element, that's enough to matter these fruits. And this is in accordance with Rav Papa, who says when the fruit come back home, even if it was done with Mason, it's mut. Vasar, Rechemi, Lameimar. And Rechemi comes along and he says, no. You need to have two positive elements. Even if it's back home, only if it was transported by Shaygig, it will be mutter. If it's back home. But if it's transported by Mazid, in which case the Issa was done, even if it's back in the original Tchum, it would be Asr. Because according to Rechemia and Rechemia and Yaakov, you need two positive elements here. You need to have number one, that was Bishagi, in which case there was no Isser committed. And number two, it's back in its original location. Let's take a look at Rashi inside. Five lines from the top. El Alav, Al Karach, you must say, Hai Bim Kaiman Bishagi Kama. When Rechemi says, he specifies that the only way you can eat it, if it's Bim Kaiman back in its original location, apparently he's referring to Shagi. Mechlau, apparently the Tanakama, after made it Shari. Tanakam allows it to be eaten even if it was transported by Mezid. When? When it ended up back in its original location. Tanakama subscribes to two leniencies. Meaning, either or. Either if it was transported by Shari, in which case there was no Isra done. So even if it's currently still out of the Tchum, you can eat these fruit. Or, if it's back in its original location, in which case, we ignore the fact that it was transported in and out. So in that case, even if it was B'mezid, we disregard the Isser of the person, and therefore, the fruits can be eaten and can be treated as though they never left the Tchum. So one or the other is sufficient according to Tanakam. This is the Bryce speaking. If it's out of its place, If it's out of its place, and also, it was b'meizid. Then you can't eat it. Im yatsu b'meizid. Av ochazru b'mkoyman. B'meizid nama yachl. But it's back in its original location. In that case, 
Even if it was done by Mesut, you can go and eat it because it's back home. And this is in accordance with Rav Papa. So that's the Pshat of Tanakam. When Tanakam says, Bishoyi can eat it and not be Mesut, he's referring to a case where it was out of the Makam, where it's out of the location, sitting out of the Tchum. In that case, it would differentiate between Shoyi and Mesut. But if it's back home, then even if it was done by Mesut, it's okay. So in summary, according to Tanakam, one positive element is enough. But us, he says, no. We require both positive elements to be present to be matter the fruit. It needs to be b'shoi again also, back in its original, original location. Says Rashi, Hai b'shoi ge'achlu, b'mezed lo ye'achlu, d'ka'amras. This, that you've said, that when it was b'shoi you can eat it, and b'mezed you can't, ash lo kaiman, is only referring to when it's out of its original location. But if it's back home, then you could eat it regardless. Eh, no can. That's not so. Elo, I'm a koiman itmar. This differentiation, shaking and mazin, actually pertains to a case when it's back home. The im chazulim koiman, if they were taken back to the original location, bishayi yachlu. So if it's back home and this transportation took place bishayi, in which case there are both positive elements present, so no iser, and it's also back home, you can eat it. They would be amazed, but if it took place with amazed, in which case an Issa was committed, lo yei achlu, they cannot be eaten. Because according to Rabbi Chemia, you require both positive elements to be present. Number one, no Issa was committed. And number two, it's back home. However, the Tanakama, the Tanakama is like Papa. He was like Rabbi Papa. That even if it was not very committed, it was amazed. But once it's brought back home, back to the original Tchum, we disregard the impropriety of this person, we focus on the fruit themselves, they're faultless, they're not held accountable, they're a nuisance. And therefore, no harm was done. They revert back to the original status, it's as though nothing happened. Let's see the Gemara. So at this point, in summary, if we have two positive elements, all agree it's mutter. Meaning if it was b'shayik, no isa was committed, and also the fruit are back home, all agree it's mutter. When there are two negative elements here. Meaning, it was amazing, and it's still sitting out there. All agree it's Asr, because he's benefiting from the Isr by eating it out there. So certainly, the fruit cannot be eaten according to all shittas. The question is, if one or the other are present, meaning, it's back home, but it was amazing, or it's sitting out, outside the Tchum, Shalai but it was B'Shoi, in which case an Isr was not committed, then we have a Machlekes. According to Anakam, it's Mutar, and according to Nechemia, it's us. Says the Gemara, Loi, let's not assume this, this is the right interpretation of the Machlekes. Perhaps all agree that if there was a Mazid committed here, if there was an Isser done, it would be us even if it was returned back to its original location. Unlike Rav Papa. Says the Gemara, Loi, Even if it's a back from Kaiman, but if it was done by Mazid, all agree perhaps that it's us. Because an Isser was done, and you may not benefit from the Isser, you can't eat these fruit, and this is not like your pup. How are we going to interpret the Machlekes? Machlekes only pertains to a case where it was Bishagig and Shalibim Kaiman. So there's one positive and one negative element here. It was Bishagig, no Isser was done, but it's currently out of its location, Shalibim Kaiman. Perhaps only, only in that case is there Machlekes, Tanakama who allows, and Rechemiu doesn't. He says, well, even if it's out of its location, but since it was Bishagi, in which case there was no Isser done, he's not benefiting from an Isser, and therefore he can eat it out of the out of the Tchum, within the four Amas, of course. Even if it was done Bishagi, in which case no Isser was committed, if they're back in the original location, in which case you have Two positive elements. Number one, on account of the intent, there was there was a shaygi, there was no iser, and number two, on account of its location, it's back home. Only then can you use it. Shalayim come in light. But if it's outside of its original location, so although you have the positive element of lack of intent, it was a shaygi, no iser was done. But since it's out of its location, light, you cannot eat these fruits. So that's the machlekes. Why would you not be able to eat it? Explains Taisus because, as a concern. That if we allow him to eat it, since really 
you must keep them within four amas. The concern if you if you allow somebody to eat it, perhaps they'll take it out of the four amas unknowingly. Therefore, Machamia holds, you may not eat these fruit even if they were transported by Shaykh. So perhaps that's the Pshanda Machlaikas. But all would agree that if there was any basin involved, that it's also even if it was brought back to the original location, you may not partake, you may not benefit from something where an Issa was committed. So all agree that that halach would be asr and would not be consistent, consistent with Rapapa. Says the Gemara, but I'm going to prove to you that that's not the case. That the Kama holds like Rapapa. Why? Let's take a look, a closer look at the wording of the Bryce. Vaha medictani sefer. Because if we take a look at the Brysa, the uh, other Brysa that was brought, the, the Gemara calls it the Sefer. Remechemya, Reb Lezer, Ben Yaakov, Oimrim, Lo'ilam Asurim, fruit that were transported out of the Tchum, will remain Asur until Ad, Sheyachsu, and Mekayim, and Shagigin. Unless they return back to the original location, and it was done by Shagig. Shagigin, only by Shagig, but not by Mezid. Mechlal, now the fact that there, Remechemya, Reb Lezer, Ben Yaakov, are insisting that it's only Mutter in this case, when it was brought back by Shagig, so they're coming to challenge somebody. It's coming to challenge the Tanakama. Apparently, Mekal the Tanakama suffer, but Mezid, not Mishari. Even if there was a Mezid committed here, it was done deliberately. But since it's back home, it's okay. Shmami, no? Indeed, this is a Raya. Then the Kama holds like a Papa. So, in summary, regarding fruit that was taken out of the Tchum, we have three categories. If we have two negative elements, so to speak, meaning they were taken out by Mezid, so we have the intent. And also the currently Shleibim Kaiman, the outside of the original location, the outside of Tchum, all agree that it's Asr. Because one cannot benefit from the Yisr. You can't eat them at the current location, which will be a direct benefit of the Yisr. What if we have two favorable elements? Number one, on account of the intent, it was Bishaykik. And number two, they're back home. In this case, all agree that it's Mutter. Because there was no Yisr committed. And He's not having any anah from the Yisr. They're back home. They're back in the original Tchum. What if we have one favorable and one unfavorable element here? For instance, it was done b'mezid. So that's the negative aspect. But they're b'mkayon. They were brought back to the original location. The Gemara concluded, according to Tanakhama, it's mutter. In accordance with Shizra Papa, we don't consider eating them as though you're benefiting from the Yisr. Because they're back home. We don't Hold the, fruit, hold the fruit accountable. They're not like a Yetzir Chutz Latchum. They were carried in both directions. They're, they're faultless. They're, they're Anusim. And therefore, one can eat them. Since they're back in the original location, and they reattain, they re, regain the original Tchum. According to Rechemia, Blazer Yaakov, even in this case, it would be also because a mazid was done, and he's going to be benefiting from the Yisr that was done with the fruit. Likewise, in the case where it was Bishagig, so we have that positive element, but it's Shalabim Kaiman. It's outside of its original location. So we have one pro, one con. The same Achlekes. Kohen Tan Nakama will be Mutter. Because there was no Issa committed, it was Bishayik. Whereas according to the other Shittas, it's Asr. So it's explained. Although, in theory, they, they agree that one should be allowed to eat it since there was no Issa committed. He's not benefiting from an Issa. So one can eat them as long as they remain within the four Amma a space that was granted to them. However, if we allow them to eat it, perhaps one will go ahead and inadvertently carry it out of, out of the four armies, which is us, and therefore, Remechem, it was a Yaakov hold, even in this case, one is not allowed to eat those fruits. Continues the Gemara. A person was out in the wilderness, he's walking along, and he can't really determine the Tchum Shabbos. How's he meant to know how far I can walk. It's so very simple. He walks 2,000 average steps, as Rashi says, which is presumed to be an Amo. And this is regarded as Tchum Shabbos. So for instance, he knows that from the point where at which he was present during Ben Hashemosh, the onset of Shabbos, from there he may walk 2,000 steps, average steps, and that becomes his Tchum Shabbos. Now, perhaps it's not going to result in a precise 2,000 Amma, 
Nevertheless, the Chachamim said this is sufficient to measure, to calculate the Tchum Shabbos. V'omar of Nachum Ramashmo. Shabbos Bebik. If a person spent Shabbos out in the open, in a valley, V'kifua Nachum Mechitza B'Shabbos. And what happened? In the middle of Shabbos, suddenly, Goyim showed up, and they surrounded the area with Mechitzas. It became an enclosed area. Now these Mechitzas are valid Mechitzas. What is the halacha? Can this person walk throughout his entire enclosure or not? It says of Nachman, in the name of Shmuel, Mahalach al Amma. This person can only walk 2,000 Amma around where he was Shavis, where he was present during Ben But he cannot walk past 2,000 Amma. Even though he's right now surrounded in this huge enclosure, which is much larger than 2,000 Amma, he's limited to his original Tchum, which is 2,000. But he's allowed to be metaltal, chafetim, he can carry objects throughout this entire enclosure, which is now Rosh Hashanah Even in the section which is beyond his tchum, how's it going to be metaltal? By throwing. Let's take a look at Rashi inside, which is 13 lines from the bottom. It says, Rashi, umetaltal bekula, afilo chutz la paim, she'en rishus la halach. He can carry even beyond the 2,000 Amma limit, where he can't personally walk there. He can carry through, through throwing. Meaning, he can throw there, he can play some ball, he can throw an object into the section beyond his Tchum. The Kaimelan. Because we know we learned, even a Mechitza which was constructed on Shabbos, is considered to be a valid Mechitza. So this allows him to carry throughout his entire enclosure. But when it comes to walking, he's limited. His tchum doesn't change. Because, let's remember, during Ben Hashemosh, there, no, there were no mechitzas here. This entire enclosure cannot be regarded as his Shabbos residence. He was Shabbos out in the open. So his tchum remains limited to 2,000 Am. He can only walk up until 2,000. But past that 2,000, he can still carry something. Because it's within the enclosure. Says Rashi, So from these words, the fact that Rav tells us he can throw beyond his tchum, we hear from this, the Betoich Apayim Metal Kadarka. Within the 2000, certainly he can freely carry as usual. Because he's within an enclosed area. So when it comes to walking, he's limited to 2000 Amma. He can carry just uh, regularly through, through that area. Because he's, he's surrounded by Mechitzes, which is Rashi but in the space, in the section beyond this 2,000, he can no longer walk there, he must stop right there, but he can carry there by Zerika, by throwing something into that section. So that's the Shita of Rav Nachman Rav Continues the Gemara. Rav Huna Amar, certainly when it comes to walking, he's limited to 2,000. When it comes to carrying something, he's very restricted. He can only carry within four Amis. He can carry freely Throughout this enclosure, ask the Gemara, Why can't he be metalto throughout the entire enclosure? Like Rav Nachman said, through throwing. There's a concern that if you allow him to throw to the section that's beyond his tchum, he might be drawn. He might he might follow the object which he threw. He might decide that he needs it and inadvertently walk beyond his tchum. Okay, so that explains why he can't throw something beyond his tchum. However, within the 2,000, why can't he just carry Ki'urche? Just normally. What's wrong with carrying within the Tchum, which now is surrounded by Mechitzes, which is just a There's no concern there. He's allowed to walk there. Says the Gemara, you know what the reason is? The reason why he cannot carry even within his 2,000 Amma enclosure. And, and we, we, we treat it like a caramelist, right? We said he can only be metaltal within four Amas. He can't carry something past four Amas. It's like a caramelist. You know why? The reason is because Huna, based on this Gzera, we don't allow him to transfer something into the section which is beyond this Tchum, right? There's a Gzera Shem Yimashach. He might follow it. So Allah is, whenever we have an area which is open, which has been breached, completely exposed 
to another area to which it cannot transfer, it's nifritzah lemokim ha'asala, that interferes with the status of the first section as well. It's as though it's open to a, a karmelus. So the two areas interfere with each other. And unless he separates himself, cordons himself off from the other area, it's as though he's open to a karmelus and he cannot carry. It's as though it's a place which doesn't have machitzis. And therefore, he's restricted. He can only carry within four amas. He cannot carry four amas or more. So that's Shem Rav Huna. Mishum dava ke machitza shenifritza lemok b'maloya It's as though a machitza was breached, completely breached and exposed lemok ha'asala to a place to which he cannot transfer something to. Like a karmelis. Likewise, in this case, since you don't allow him to transfer to the section beyond the tchum, it's a makam ha'asala. So even the section within the tchum is asr. You cannot carry four amas there. It's, it's been breached to Makam It's like a place which has no machitzes. And therefore, Rav Huna says, the only way you can carry is within four amas, like a karmelis. Continues the Gemara. So at this point, we have two shittas. Where Rav Huna, who doesn't allow carrying into that section, beyond his tchum, and as a result of that, he's prohibited from carrying even within his tchum. And this is based on the Gzirah Shami Mashech. He might be drawn and tempted to follow the object into that forbidden area, which Rav Nachman says is no such concern. Not only can he carry within the 2000 Ami area, he can also transfer something beyond that section as well. Continues the with another quote, which seems to be a third sheet. So when it comes to walking, he's limited to 2000. When it comes to carrying, he can only carry within the 2000 Ami. Says the Merkeman. And of course, he says, who's Shita? Is he making this statement? Whose reasoning is he following? The like Rav Nachman, like Rav Huna. Not Rav Nachman, nor is it Rav Huna. Meaning, according to Rav Nachman, not only can he carry within 2,000, but he's allowed to be metaltal in the other section as well, through throwing. So apparently he's not following that Shita. Nor is he following Rav Huna. Because Rav Huna says, there's a Gzira, Shami Yimashech, and he cannot go ahead and transfer something to the section beyond the Tchum. And that results in creating an Isser, even within the Tchum area. He's limited to within four hours, like a Karmelis. Because it's Nifrit, So, according to Chiba Rav, who seems to hold that you cannot go ahead and transfer to the area beyond, he says you can only be Metato within the 2000. So if that's the case, meaning he's following Rav Huna's Gzera, how could he allow tr- carrying within the 2000? It's been breached and exposed to Makam Asr. Says the Gemara, Ema, learn as follows. This is what he meant to say. Metal to Ba'arba. He walks 2000. When it comes to Tiltal, he can only be Metal to within four Amis. Just like a Karmelis. Says the Gemara, Yahya, Rav Huna. If that's the case, then this is exactly Rav Huna's Shita. He's not coming to offer a third opinion. Ema, learn as follows. This is how we meant to read it. V'chein, Omar Rav Chia Baraf. Indeed, he's coming to support Rav Huna that he holds he cannot transfer to the section beyond the Tchum. There's a Gzera that he might follow it. And that results in creating an Esser even to the entire enclosure, even to the area within 2000 Amma, within his Tchum, because it's been exposed to a Makam Asura. Omar Rav Nachman Rav Huna. So Rav Nachman holds there's no Gzera, Shami Yemashech, Rav Huna holds there is. Rav Nachman turned to Rav Huna. You shouldn't be in disagreement of Shmuel. Rav Nachman was the one who quoted Shmuel. It does not hold of this Gzera. There's no concern that a person will be drawn after his object. You're not meant to disagree with Shmuel. Why? The Tanik say, Because there's a price that supports him. Which indicates that there's no Gzera. In such a case. The Sanya. A person was walking along and calculating his Trum. And what happened? The Kosa Midasa Bechatsir. And his calculation, his trum, ended smack in the middle of the city. Says the Braiser, Mutal Talta B'chalir Kulam. This fellow is allowed to carry throughout the entire city. A city that has mechitzes, that has an Erev, or perhaps it's Yom Tov. Ubalavad provided, Shaloi Yavar Satchum Baraglav. He doesn't walk past his trum. <laughs> Says Rav Nachman, if he can't walk past the trum, how is he going to be metaltal 
in this section of the city that's beyond his tchum. But my metalto, how is he meant to carry? Lava like this Apparently, we're speaking about throwing something. So he's stuck at the border of his tchum, but he can still carry past that by throwing an item. So apparently, there's no gzera that a person will be drawn after the chayfets. Amraf huna loy al yidei meshvicha. We're not speaking about throwing. We're speaking about Mashiach, pulling to, towards oneself. In this case, explains Rashi, there's no concern. He's going to follow his chayfetz. When a person throws something, perhaps he'll decide, oh, I'd like to go retrieve it. So there, if Huna says it's a concern, he might, he might be drawn past his home after his object. But if he's merely bringing something towards himself, in this case, there's no concern. So that's the case that the Bryce is speaking about. He's limited to half the city. He can't walk past that. But he can be metaltal past the boundary by bringing something in from outside, bringing something in to the Tchum, in which case there's no concern this will lead him to walk past the Tchum. However, in our case that we mentioned earlier, with the person who uh, when it was out in the uh, field, in the Bika, and he has these mechitzas that were erected on Shabbos, we cannot allow him to even throw past the Tchum because he might go ahead and follow his item, in which case he's going to be going past the Tchum. Omer Afuna, this person was walking along and measuring, calculating his tchum. The and it ended right in the middle of the chatzer. He can only walk up until that point, not past. Pshita, of course. Why would I think otherwise? Ema, learn as follows. This is what he meant to say. We give him half the chatzer. He's allowed to walk within that first half. This is also obvious. Why would I think otherwise? Says the Gemara. Maudatim, perhaps I would think there's a concern here. Leichush, we should be concerned. Dilma asay letotul bikula. Perhaps if you allow him to walk within that first half of the chutzar, since a chutzar is a courtyard is a commonly used area, it's not like the mechitzas which were um, constructed out in the field in the bika. This is a permanent structure. It's a chutzar. It's commonly used. It's a residential area. Perhaps I'll make a mistake. I'll confuse matters. I'll say, well, if I can walk. Up until this point, why can't I walk for, further? It's considered to be one enclosed area, and perhaps this will lead him past his tchum. Kamash Mon Ruhuna says there's no such concern. He can walk up to the halfway point of the Chatzar without any concerns. Omar of Nachman, Moidili Huna, Order of Huna held that the Zegzera of Shami Yamashech, a person is allowed to throw past the tchum, perhaps he'll follow the Chayfetz. Rav Huna is Moida to me. He'll agree to me in the following case. This person was walking along, calculating his tchum. The kosamidasai asfas tikra, and his boundary ended right in front of the home. So we're speaking about a home that perhaps doesn't even have a doorway; it only has this sfas tikra, the face of the ceiling, which is facing this person. In this case, since he has a very very visible signpost here, look, I can only walk up until the home. The home itself, under that ceiling, is off limits. It's beyond my tchum. So since he has that mental signpost here, muto tato chalabais. In this case, certainly even Rav Huna would agree, he can't walk into the home. It's beyond his tchum, but he's allowed to be metalto. He can throw something throughout the entire home. My time or why? Why is this different? The face of that ceiling, which, which is facing the person, makes it clear and evident Look, I'm limited up until the home. His boundary has been clearly demarcated. There's no concern that will be drawn into the home. The tirkra of the bias is chayvetis. It's as though it's descending downward and closing up the home and rendering it off limits. Therefore, even if Huna would agree, in this case, there's no concern that will be tempted to follow beyond the tomb. So in summary, we had a case where a person was Shabbos Rebika. He spent Shabbos out in the open valley on Shabbos itself, some Nachum came along and constructed a mechitza around this huge area. So when it comes to walking, all agree he's limited to his original tchum of 2,000 Amma. When it comes to being metal to lachevitz, we have Rav Nachman, he can carry freely throughout the tchum. But when it comes to the section that's beyond this tchum, he can also carry there Aide Zrika by throwing something into that area. There's no concern that he, he might be drawn after his chevitz. And walk beyond the tchum. Contra there is such a xer. Therefore, he says, when it comes to carrying things around, 
He must do it within four Amis. Even in the Tchum area. Why? Because he cannot go ahead and transfer something to the section beyond this Tchum. There's a concern that he might follow that item into that area. So based on that, an Isser applies to the entire enclosure. Because even the section of the Tchum area has been exposed fully to an area to which it cannot transfer. Which is regarded like a karmless as far as he's concerned. And therefore, the halacha, halacha is that a place which has a mechitza which was nifrat, a place which is asr, is regarded like a karmless, and therefore he's restricted and limited in his carrying, in his carrying ability, he can only carry within four amas like a karmless. The Gemara concludes that Rav Huna would agree in the following two cases. Aide mishicha, if he's drawing an item towards himself, in which case there's no concern that he's going to follow that item out. And as we just learned, this fast tikra, the edge, the face of the ceiling of the home, which is right in front of him, which tells him to stop, which clearly demarcates the boundaries here and eliminates the concern that perhaps he might be drawn into the home. Continues the Gemara. Amar of Huna Breda of So we have a Machlegis, you know, Nachman says, there's no Gzeira Shami Yemashech. And Rav Huna says there is. Ki Tanoi, it appears that there's a Machlegis Tanoi, which is actually based on this very question. Machlegis we had now Mishnah. The Goyim took this person out of his home and he transported him to a different city. Or in these enclosed areas. What happens? We regard this enclosed area like four Amas. It's considered to be like one residential area. You can walk freely throughout this entire enclosure. Although, generally speaking, a person who is taken out of the Tchum is now limited and restricted to four Amas. But since he was placed in a Mokai Muk of Machitzes, we consider this entire enclosure like one residential area, like four Amas, and therefore he can walk throughout the entire area. Rabbi Rabbi Shua, Rabbi Kiba, Aymim? No, Aim Le'alab Amas. Since he wasn't in this area at the onset of Shabbos, we can't regard this like his personal place of residence, and therefore he's limited to four Amas. So we have this Machlekes. Continues the Gemara. My love, shall we not say that the Machlegas here is based on the reasoning, on the on the Xerah that we mentioned earlier? My love, Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Lezman Azari, the Amru, Malchus Kula, they hold one can walk throughout the entire enclosed area because it's a Makkah of Machitis. They don't say, well, let's make a Xerah to prevent him from walking throughout this entire enclosed ear, the deer of Asar, these animal pens, they don't say, well, let's restrict it on account of perhaps confusion that can arise. Perhaps if you allow this, a person will stretch this allowance further and will go ahead and walk freely even when he was placed in a bika, which is an area which is not enclosed by Mechitzes, where certainly he's restricted to Fuamis. So the fact is that we see they don't. They don't make exera. They're not concerned. If we allow this, perhaps a person will come to allow that. Says the Gemara, the fact, from the fact that we see that they don't make exera, this type of walking, on account of the other type of walking, likewise, tilt not like gazri. In a case of a tiltal question, they won't say, well, it's usher to be a tiltal uh, past your tchum in that enclosed area where the Goyim uh, erected that Mechitza and the Bika, for concern that perhaps it might lead him to walk past the Tchum. Tiltu, Otto, Hilach, Le Gazri. They don't, they don't apply these Gzeris when it comes to the Tchum. So that, that appears to be their Shita. They don't make the Gzeris, and therefore, it appears they don't hold the Gzeris, Shemi Moshek, like Rav Nachman. On the other hand, we have Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Kiva, Doimim, Eino, Elar, Amis. When this person was placed by the Goyim in, the, in this enclosed area, he's restricted to four Amis. Why? Apparently, this is Xerah here. The Gazri, he looked at Versar. They say, well, one should not walk freely throughout this entire Deir Versar, even though it's an enclosed area. Why? Because it might lead to confusion. They make Xerah, in this case, or two on account of he looked at Bika. If a person was placed by the Goyim in a Bika, in a unfenced area, one, one is not allowed to walk throughout this entire valley because it's an unfenced area. He's restricted to four amas. Therefore they say, even when he was placed in a Malkin Muk of Machitzes, he's meant to limit himself to four amas on account of confusion. It shouldn't lead him to do so 
when it happened with an open area. From the fact that we see that they apply exera to one situation of hiluch on account of another situation of hiluch. Likewise, they would apply exera here as well. Perhaps they would say, well, when it comes to carrying, in this case where the person was surrounded by mechitzes and his tchum ended at a certain point, and he'd like to carry even beyond that by throwing something, tiltul atu hiluch nami gazri. Likewise, they would apply xero that a person should not carry past the tchum section because he might be drawn after his chayfetz and might lead him to hiluch, which is aser, to walk past the tchum. So the more at this point connects the two things. The first shita will not hold of the xero, and the second shita will hold of the xero. Says the Gemara Mimai, how do you know to connect the two things? Perhaps these two discussions are totally unrelated. The basis of the Machlokes in our Mishnah, in the case where the Goyim places this person in a, in a closed area on Shabbos, is, is really based on a more fundamental issue, a, a, an area of issue. Why? Dilma, ki loy gazi, rongam liel, reb lezmin azariah. Perhaps the reason why they don't apply exera. They don't say we're concerned in the case of Hiluch Sa'ar Vidir. In the case where a person was placed in the enclosed area, they don't limit him. They say, well, you can walk throughout the entire area. They don't say that should be us or Otu Hiluch Bika on account of perhaps creating confusion. This might lead a person to walk freely even when it was a Bika in an unenclosed area. You know why they don't apply Xer? They're not concerned. Hanimi Li That only pertains there. Why? The Shnei Mekayim is saying, these two areas, the enclosed area and the exposed area, are two separate types of areas. There's no reason to suspect that one won't confuse one for the other. So when they place the person in an enclosed area, why not walk throughout the entire area? It's a makam of Dal Damas. We treat it like a residential area, like one makam Dal Damas. As opposed to the Bika, which is, which is an exposed area, a person certainly would not, would not even think of walking past Dal Damas. They're two different types, two varieties, they're two different types. Abel tiltal atu hiluch, the makam echadu. But in the case where we're dealing with one place, one enclosure. For instance, the case that we discussed earlier, the person was Shabbos Babika, so during Ben Hashemashah, he was open and exposed in the valley. On Shabbos, some machitzes showed up. In which case, he can walk up to 2,000. And the question is, can he go ahead and throw something, even at this section, which is beyond this tchum, over there perhaps, there's more reason to be concerned. It's mokim echot. If you allow him to carry into that area, perhaps he'll forget himself and continue walking past his chayfetz. He'll say, look, it's, it's one mokim, he won't differentiate in one place and the other. It can lead to confusion. So in that case, in this case, certainly, perhaps, they would apply the gzera. Don't, don't carry beyond your tchum because you might be drawn after your chayfetz. So perhaps, even though when it comes to the Allah of the guy and placing the person in a dear facade, they allow. Because there's no reason for confusion, no, there's no basis for Xer. As opposed to this case where there is a basis. So that's on one hand. On the other hand, Rabbi Shur, Rakiva Nami, they as well, perhaps their shita is based on a more fundamental issue here. How do you know that the reason why they don't allow a person when he was placed by Goyim in a in a closed area, to walk throughout this entire area, he's limited to farms, perhaps that's nothing to do with Xera. Remind me from the Gazru. How do you know that's related to Xera? Because that can lead to, to a pitfall in a different situation, or lead him to walk, even in a case where it's an unexposed, with an exposed area like a Bika. How do you know it has to, has to do with that? Dilma, perhaps the reason there is, it's based on the following concept. Mishum the Kasavi, they hold. Ki amrinam kalabayis kulei ka'ara amizdam. When do we say, when do you adopt a formula that the entire home is considered to be like one unit? And regardless of its large size, we consider it mer- merely like four amas. This is the person's personal space. When do you adopt that formula? Han immediately, that's only When a person was present in this enclosure, when it was still there, meaning he was there at the onset of Shabbos. This was his Shabbos residence. So at the point of Ben Hashemash, when the Shabbos residence becomes initiated and established, this fellow was where? Within these, these mechitzes. 
Therefore, this entire enclosure is considered like his residence, his personal space. It's merely regarded like four armies. Avol hecha, the loy shavas, pavir mechitzim b'adyoni. But in a case such as where the goyim transported him out of the tchum, brought him into a place of mechitzis, he wasn't there in b'adyoni. It was loy shavas pavir mechitzim b'adyoni. He wasn't there at the onset of Shabbos. This place was not established as his Shabbos residence. Why? In this case, we don't say that the entire enclosure is regarded like four amas. Your home is elsewhere. In your original Makam Shvisa. Just because you were brought here on Shabbos, this doesn't turn into your Shabbos residence. We can't regard this entire enclosure as your personal space. Rather, we give you four amas. So even if you're in a Makam Mukam Machitzes, you're limited to four amas. So this is the point of contention between the two shittas here. It's unrelated. The question of gzera, which was discussed earlier between Rav Nachman and Rav Huna. Concludes the Gemara. Omar Rav, Hilcha Silke Ram Gamliel, Bedir Vesar Rasfina. The Allah of Allah Ram that a person finds himself in a, a muk and muk of machitzis, like the deer, the sar, or the ship, he's allowed to walk throughout the entire area. He's not limited to four amas. This is all we gave him. It's as though we initiated a new Mokim Shvisa for him. Even though he wasn't there during Merash Mashes, this becomes his, his new Shabbos residence. So since it's in a Mokim of Mechitzes, the entire area is one unit. It's considered like merely four Amas. Ushmol Amar, Hilchaz Akram Gamliel B'Sfino. We only follow Ram Gamliel by, by a ship. Like he walks throughout the ship. Avo B'Dir V'Sar Loi, when it comes to a Dir V'Sar, we don't follow Ram Gamliel Shita, and it's limited to four Amas. So we will proceed to expound on this and explain what's the difference between one case and the other. Perhaps it would be wise to leave it for tomorrow. So in summary, let's just review today's daf. We began with the case of the Paris, which was transported out of the Tchum. We have four scenarios. When we have two elements which are unfavorable, <laughs> they were taken out of the Tchum B'mezit, so Issa was done, and they're currently out of their place. All agree, one is not allowed to eat them because he's going to be benefiting from the Issa. If it was done by Shagin, in which case an Issa was not done, and they're back in the original location, it says, oh, nothing happened. All agree, we'll go ahead and eat them. Because no Issa was done, he's not benefiting from Issa. And it's back in its original Tchum. In a situation where we have two elements, one positive and one negative, for instance, if it was transported, B'mezit, but the fruit are back in the original location, B'm Kaiman, according to Tanakam, it's Muta to eat them. Like her Papa Shita, Anusim Ninu. They're faultless. They're not held accountable for the Isser that was done to them by this person. Therefore, since they're back in the original location, they receive the original Tchum back. And one can eat them without any concern because he's not benefiting from any Isser. This is what they were originally. According to Nechemi, in this case it's Isser because at the end of the day an Isser was committed and he's benefiting from this. In a case where they've been transported by Shagig, so that's one positive element. There's no intent. But they're Shalabim Kaiman. The location is problematic. They're outside the Tchum. In this case as well, Tanakhama says it's mutter, as long as he keeps them within their four Amis. According to the other sheet, this is Asr, as it explains, because if we allow them to be eaten, perhaps one might go ahead and remove them out of their four Amis limit. We learned that if a person is out in the wilderness, he'd like to calculate Tchum Shabbos. How does he do so? By walking 2,000 Psyis Beinonius average steps, and that is determined as 2,000 Amis for his Tchum Shabbos. We learned likewise if a person was Shabbos Babika, is out in the valley, and on Shabbos, some goyim arrived and created some mechitzes around this huge area. So he can only walk throughout the original tomb of 2000. If Nachum says, he's allowed to carry throughout the entire enclosure. According to Rapun, who know he may not. We're concerned that if he throws into the section beyond this tomb, he might follow his object there and walk beyond the tomb. So as a result of that restriction, this creates an issa throughout the entire enclosure, which has been breached and exposed to that area. The Gemara concludes, in the following two cases, Rafuna would allow Aidei Shicha if he's drawing the chavitz towards him, in which case there's no concern that he'll be drawn after the chavitz. Likewise, if his tchum ends right before this sfas tikra, this ceiling, which creates that clear marking of its boundary, in this case as well, there's no concern. The Gemara concluded that perhaps the machlek is in our Mishnah regarding the goyim placing this person in this enclosed area is somehow related to the question of the gzera between Nachman and Rav Huna. The Gemara concluded the two things are unrelated.